All right, so if you're a fan of the podcast that Kyle and I do, you know I have now, we've now finished the NFC, uh, so we're now moving on to the AFC this upcoming Wednesday, but I figured, you know what, now that I've given my actual record predictions for each NFC team, let me go through and power rank each of them 16 to 1. Let's just get into it. Starting off with the bottom four, and I guess I should plug the podcast uh, on the Sideline Podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast, it's available, or just on the YouTube channel here on the live tab. Uh, It doesn't go as a regular video anymore. Uh, They moved it to just the live tab, uh, but it's still available there. But yeah, anyway, uh, bottom four, and listen... There's always going to be something optimistic about every team, right? There's always a way you can talk yourself into it. Uh, For a team like the Cardinals, who I ended up giving a 4-13 and prediction to, you know, really, Kyler is kind of the question for me. And I I don't think they have a lot of talent around Kyler. There's Again, there's going to be a couple other pieces. Buda Baker's good, right? Like, I I don't actually kind of like Hollywood Brown for what he is. Um, But, like, there there isn't a ton there for... Uh, Kyler, uh, Kyler, and also, what are we getting out of Kyler Murray? Um, the Rams, uh, there's just, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of question marks I have with this Rams roster. Again, uh, even if the stars are stars, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, I don't think it's crazy to think they could all be good, but I'm really worried about the secondary, really worried about the, uh, t- you know, the wide receiving talent outside of Cooper Cup. Uh, I don't, I think there's questions on the offensive line. I think Aaron Donald is going to have to, you know, do a lot for this front seven. So those are the two bottom teams. The Bears, again, I just don't love the defense. I think there's real question marks defensively. And and I would say there are some young players who could step into those roles. That's on the table for sure. But just am I banking on it? Not necessarily. I think the offense should be solid. And if Justin Fields does take that next step, they could easily finish better than the 6-11 and record that I'm projecting them to. But right now, that's, that's where I have them. And, you know, Falcons also I have at 6-11. and Any tie... I just decided which one I feel like I would put higher in the power rankings. So uh, the ties, the rankings are still there. I still do have the Falcons above the Bears, even if there's no record difference. Um, you know, for a team like Atlanta, it does kind of feel like they're the kind of team that uh, you can talk yourself into for sure. And if everything goes right, it is a team that could work. But it just, it feels like there's a lot of ifs here for Atlanta. You know, if Desmond Ritter plays solid, if... Uh, you know, B. John Robinson comes in and is a superstar running back from day one. Uh, if the, you know, uh, the, the defense can play surprisingly competent, which I don't even know if that's possible. So, uh, you know, for me, I guess that's not true. It's it's possible. The secondary could be very good. The defensive line, though, uh, is where I have my concerns with the Falcons. So while, yes, there's a way you can talk yourself into it, maybe more so than the bottom couple teams, still don't love this Atlanta roster. Next four, um, you see that I actually do have a playoff team in the mix here, uh, as three NFC South teams are in this uh, section. Another one was in the last section, so obviously number nine uh, would win the division with a 7-10 and 10 record. Panthers at 12, 6-11 and 11 is there, uh, my projections there. I just think this is going to take some time. I think, yes, you know, I, I think they overperformed a little bit last season. I think the defense is scrappy. There's definitely guys who I like, although I still have some questions, like, you know, cornerback depth, I still think is a question mark as of right now, although there are players I like on that defense. Um, the offense, don't love this receiving core. It was a tough receiving core with DJ Moore. Without him, it's going to be tough. And, you know, we're expecting a lot out of Bryce Young year one. So what are we going to get out of him? Tampa Bay at number 11. Again, they're going to run the ball. They're going to do this Todd Bowles thing of help out the defense. The defense should still be good, um, which is why I have them at sort of a 7-10 and 10 record, a little ahead of some of the other ones, because I do think the defense should be solid. But I don't know how much I love this offense, which is saying something given to have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. But I don't know if I trust the uh, whoever ends up at quarterback for Tampa Bay. I don't love the offensive line, to be honest, outside of obviously Jensen and Wirfs are great, but the other three options, not so much. So that's why I have them there. The Giants, listen, I'm just, I'm betting against the Giants and maybe I'll be wrong. I know Giants fans don't like uh, how I consistently uh, sort of hate on them, but the way I see it, I think this is a team that 
overperformed last year. I don't think that they're a fantastic roster, and I think that, you know, I still don't love their receiving core. I still have concerns about their offensive line. I actually kind of like Daniel Jones, but not for $40 million. Uh, Saquon's good. Um, of course, we all know that. I did like adding Darren Waller. I think that will help. I think they'll be a better team this year, just a better team with a worse record, which can happen. Um, cause you know, record isn't, you know, there is an element of luck that goes into record and just schedule and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't think this defense will be very good. Again, individual pieces I like. Interesting what Thibodeau will do moving forward. But as a whole, I see this as a below average offense and below average defense, which it was last year. So 7-10, and 10, but who knows? Maybe the coaching will get them a couple extra wins like I did last year, and it could be a playoff team. That That's possible. Absolutely. And finally, number nine, New Orleans Saints. Uh, again, haven't winning the division, but I still have some concerns. Cornerback depth being one of them. Uh, I don't love this defensive line because uh, I feel Cam Jordan is kind of on the decline at this point in his career. Concerns on the offensive line. What are we getting out of Michael Thomas? If nothing, then Chris Olave is going to have to kind of be the guy here. Uh, and what are we getting out of Carr? Because he's coming off a tough year. So there's definitely, you, again, you can talk yourself into it, but for now, I'm keeping them at 7 and 10 as a projection. Okay, next eight, we still have one more 7-10 and 10 projected team, the Green Bay Packers, I have here at eight. Um, also worth mentioning, only the top six are making the playoffs here because uh, the, the uh, Saints, who I had at number nine, they are winning their division. So uh, that's how that works. But yeah, Green Bay, again, what is Jordan Love going to get? They're a total wild card to me. Uh, my projection is that the offense isn't going to be spectacular next year, but they'll be, you know, uh, and the defense could be really good or it could be really bad, depending on how the coaching sort of handles that. They're a complete wild card to me, though. Um, Washington at number seven, people are kind of sleeping on Washington a little bit. Listen, I like Jacoby Brissett. I think he's a fine quarterback. They have weapons. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's a perfectly loaded roster, but Really, the only issue I have with their roster is kind of a lack of stars. They don't have a lot of holes on that roster. I would like to see them have, you know, again, Montez Sweat's very good, of course. But I would like to see them have just a couple more, like, star players. But they're pretty solid across the board. So I do have them as a fringe playoff team. And, you know, Minnesota uh, is kind of the opposite. They aren't that, uh, you know... They, they have holes. They just do. There are issues on this roster. But I think their offense is still going to be really good. You got Justin Jefferson. Cousins is still a solid quarterback. Again, similar to Jones. Not worth his contract. But uh, although I think he is better than Jones, um, certainly. And I think that, you know, obviously Jefferson is one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver in football currently. Um, I do think that their pass rush should be good. I have real concerns about their secondary. I have concerns about this team, which is why I still have them as a below 500 team, but I have them as a below 500 team and a wild card team because I think the NFC is very weak. And then we have a jump. I mean, I have no teams with going 9-8 and eight here. It goes up to 10-7 and seven with the Detroit Lions, who... I do think some people are getting a little excited about the Lions, and why not? It's fun to get excited. It's fun to get excited about a team like the Lions. I don't hate anyone for feeling that way, because uh, why would I hate someone for feeling some way about a football team? Uh, I've been a little bit cooler on uh, the Lions than most, just due to the... I do think we're expecting the Lions to perform better than their talent level. I think there's some concerns with the uh, receiver depth outside of Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, what are we getting out of Jamison Williams? That's a question. Offensive line should be awesome. Jared Goff should be Jared Goff. Uh, you know, I think Jameer Gibbs uh, maybe shouldn't have drafted him when he, they drafted him, but he should still be very good. And I liked what they did all these pieces defensively. I guess my question, though, is... A lot of guys who haven't played together, uh, how is it going to fit? That's kind of my concern, but I still like the Lions a lot. I still have the Lions uh, winning their division, in fact, at 10-7. and 7. That is the best NFC North uh, record I am projecting. But okay, top four in the NFC, you know, top four seeds go to division winners, but only two division winners here, both number three and four, are wild card teams given the way that it's breaking down for me. Seattle at number four, I think has a real boom potential. I think that there's a real uh, legion of boom potential, if you will. Uh, there's real upside here for this roster. If, 
you know, if Jackson Smith and Jigba comes in, and I think he will be a good slot guy, even if I was a little uh, cooler on him than some others, I think he'll still fit that offense great. And with Tyra Lockett and DK Metcalf, kind of no notes for that receiving core. Geno, I think, is really good. I, I believe in Geno. And if those young guys on the offensive line can step up, this could be an elite offense. And if Devin Witherspoon, as a corner, comes in and plays well with Tariq Woolen on the other side, this could be an elite level secondary, quite frankly, still have some concerns in that front seven, even best case scenario. And there are some ifs into what I just said. So I can't put them that much higher. But yeah, I think Seattle's legit. I do. Um, Dallas, again, another team that like, surely this year's Dallas's year, right? That's kind of how we feel like every year. The reality is, it is hard to build a contending roster with paying a Dak Prescott level quarterback the kind of money they're paying him. But they're doing a pretty good job of it. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job of it, I would say, with the, you know, uh, the defense should be awesome. The addition of Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, to me, has elevated them into NFC championship contenders, in my opinion. I think that they have, and I, but I mean, a team that could win the NFC championship. Uh, I think it's absolutely in the cards. Uh, again, you know, what do those guys have left in the tank? I think something. So definitely a team that, uh, you know, I think kind of an issue is they don't quite have the star power offensively that the 49ers do, and they don't quite have the quarterback that the Eagles do, uh, but they're still, they're right there. They're, to me, clearly number, I think they're clearly number three. I do. Number two, I'm going San Francisco, who I couldn't put number one. Again, my podcast co-host Kyle has them projected to win the Super Bowl, and I do get it. Uh, the quarterback stuff is still a concern, and I think the offensive line is a concern. They also have some, uh, I feel like, some corner depth issues. So this is not a flawless roster entering the season. But you know what? Uh, it's another no notes uh, receiving uh, top three receiving threats with uh, you know uh, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. Uh, I think Samuel and Ayuk both incredibly underrated wide receivers uh, who are very good. Also got Christian McCaffrey in the mix. I think Brock Purdy will come in and still play well. I don't know if he's elite. I don't know if he's the next Tom Brady, but he doesn't have to be. Uh, I think this, you know, defensive line could be really good, uh, could be awesome potentially. And with, a, you know, if they can just get a second corner, this could be the best defense in football. So definitely some some questions, but mostly positive. And then Philadelphia, uh, again, they lost some pieces, but their questions are like, how are these young linebackers going to step in and play well? Which, you know, how important is that in the grand scheme of things when you should have a great defensive line and still, on paper, a very good secondary, and I would say a great secondary on paper. Um, again, secondary is fluky year in and year out, but it should be good. This receiving core is awesome. Uh, again, with the, you know, uh, Dallas Goddard as sort of the third option at tight end, and then, of course, uh, you know, A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, and then Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in the NFC, and it's not really close. I mean, who's number two? I think I might go Geno or Dak Prescott. Maybe you could even argue Kirk Cousins is uh, next into the list. I'm sure someone will step up uh, and play. You know, maybe one of these young guys steps up and plays well. Uh, maybe Derek Carr is the second best no one's really challenging uh, Jalen Hurts for the best. So they're 13-4. and four. They're the favorites for me to go back, which in the NFC, you don't see that much, right? AFC, there's always one or two teams that are just sort of dominating. And NFC, it feels like there's a new team every year, but maybe not this year. Now, that's not what I'm projecting. I'm projecting the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.